everybody. I am back for another. Hey, Nikki. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Mix the Realty. And everybody who comes in and people who are joining in from the replay. Hello. Good morning. Hi. I mean, good afternoon. I'm going to make this a quick scout because, you guys, I am not feeling well today. I've been up since 5. Hey, Lady Shine. Hello. Been up since 5 a.m. Carla, welcome back. Hi, Carla. <laughs> I know I'm back doing a mobile chicks chat. I know it's been a while. It's been a while. But um, yeah, I wanted to come back because um, you know, a good friend of mine did prayer scope today and his theme was go get that money. And some of you were on yesterday and I talked about entrepreneurship and going to do what you want to do to build your business, grow your brands and all that good stuff. And I figured, I said, you know what? I have something that's on my heart and on my spirit. Hey, Latrice, go to sleep, Latrice. That's something that's on my spirit today. And I really, really wanted to share it with you guys. And, and my goal is to give you as much information as possible to help you in your endeavors, whether it's a nonprofit like Educated Diver. Uh, I'm going to give her a shout out leoslove.org go follow that website um, whether you're just starting out like Carla, Miss Phenom um, or whoever, whatever kind of business you run, um, I always like to share some tips and information so for those of you who don't know who I am I'm Adrian Graham, CEO and founder of Empower Me Corporation thank you Latrice for sharing that, leoslove.org uh, go look her up um and I have a growth strategies, business growth strategies uh, consultancy firm. That's what Empower Me does. Um, I've also been in the media, been on TV, been in the radio and magazines. You just Google Empower Me and, and then Google Adrian Graham. Um, and those of you who know me as Talent Diva on Twitter and in Periscope, that's a whole other side of me. But this is a serious business side of me. Um, I believe in entrepreneurship i think that everybody has a right and a privilege to be an entrepreneur at some point in their life although it's not for everybody so if you're going to do it my thing is do it the right way there's tons of information out there about how to start a business how to get funding how to this how to that but i see for and i'm not making a political statement or a race issue or anything like that hey positively speaking a lot of stuff we don't get included in. People that look like us, I'll just say it like that, don't get included in. So whenever I have a chance to be an ambassador or to, to speak for an organization that I believe in that really values diversity, I take every opportunity I can to do it. Um, forgive the background noise. Um, you know, I sit out in the patio on the balcony and the cars go by and it's 5 o'clock. So. But um, I am, some of you know, some of you don't know, I'm a mentor at a program called uh, Straight Shot Accelerator. And their website is straightshot, S-H-O-T, dot C-O, not dot com, dot C-O. And what it is, is it's an accelerator program. And what they do is they take 10 companies each year. And they put them through this three-month program to help accelerate and grow their business. They give them funding coming into the program. And then they turn around after the program, set up a pitch day, and let them say it again. It's straightshot, dot C-O. It's a company, a Straight Shot Accelerator Program. It's in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm going to get into that in a minute. But I share that because I'm a mentor. I've been a mentor. I'm going into my fourth cycle. Fourth, wow. Fourth cycle as a mentor for the program. And what it does is it helps uh, e-commerce and software. Yeah, straightshot.co. Thank you, Nikki. It helps e-commerce-based tech companies to get funding, hey, Sapphire Moon, and to grow and accelerate their business. And it puts them in front of investors that may want to invest in their business. I'm very proud of the companies that I have mentored personally through there. A lot of them have done, gone on to do great things. And like I said, it's in Omaha, Nebraska. Now, here's the thing. A lot of times we complain, because you know I, I'm going to diversify, I'm going to champion diversity and all that, but i got to give both sides of the coin. You know, that's, that's how I do it. I'm fair, fair and balanced and equal. A lot of times we, you know, meaning people that look like us, people of color, women also, uh, we complain and we get on social media, we chant, we yell, we scream. There's not enough for us. What about us? We don't ever get into these programs. And I fully understand that not everybody can drop their life and run to Silicon Valley for three months or run to the Durham Research you know, Triangle area for three months or Miami or even Chicago or Omaha. But every year, 
you know, and, and I take this very serious. I'm very serious about my business. I'm very serious about what and who I support. Every year, I do this big thing, and I push and tell people, you know what? Straight Shot has their applications open, guys. Come on, get your applications. If you got an app business, if you have an e-commerce business, you know, get out there. Let's get out there and, and get noticed. Go get that money. You know, they're giving you money going into the program. They're putting you up. You know, I don't know how they're doing it this year. They're giving you workspace. And at the end of three months, and three months of, of intense, volume-packed information to help you grow and scale your business. You know, and I've mentioned some of the people that, are, that I'm friends with that happen to be mentors for the program as well. So I can tell you this is no nonsense. And then at the end of it all, you get to go to demo day and you pitch and investors decide if they're going to invest in your company. So you're potentially getting more money. One of the companies I mentored got a lucrative deal with Time Warner. He moved from Omaha to New York to get a deal with Time Warner, the media company. Another one, the day of the pitch, locked it in and got a big deal with Target and moved to Minneapolis to go and do that. Now, if you have children, you have families, and you know, I understand you cannot. But let me ask you this. If you're serious about growing a business, if you are serious about growing your legacy, is it possible to make arrangements for you to take three months out of your life to get the best of the best of guidance, of counsel, of advisory, of services, of everything you can think of, people who are going to go through your business with a fine-tooth comb, people who are going to tell you and give you constructive criticism and tell you when you need to shift, when you need to pivot, when you need to scrap something, when you need to enhance something, and they have nothing to gain from this other than honest criticism and feedback to help you grow and prosper your business. So I have a problem when People say, oh, there's no accelerators out there for us. There's nothing out there for women. There's nothing out there for black people, Hispanic people, and this and that. It's there. If I could, I would. Absolutely. Hey, directors, how are you? You know, and the thing is, when I've been an entrepreneur all, basically all of my adult life. I started my first company in 1994. And I had a child at the time. I had a little kid at the time. He was two, three, whatever it was. And I had to make sacrifices. Everybody can't pick up. There are accelerator programs, not straight shot, but there are accelerator programs out there that do have online programs. I have something called Incubate to Accelerate. It's not a full-fledged accelerator program, but it prepares you similar to get ready for investment dollars. I'm not the only one doing that. There are other people out there doing that as well in all kind of communities but you have to be open and flexible you have to look and you have to be willing to put in the put in the time and the research to get it done so what what I'm why I'm sharing this if I could afford it you know what positively the only thing the only thing that you would have to do is come out with your your um, day-to-day -day expenses because they have they have housing for people when they when you go through this program, three months housing that they have. And a lot of the accelerator and I'm not, not just talking about straight shot because that's my, my, my dear to my heart. A lot of these programs they put you up in housing for that three months. And they also give you a stipend of you know one I know well straight shot last year I believe they gave twenty thousand dollars to each startup coming in. So you gotta look beyond and what did I say yesterday you guys, for those of you who are on my scope yesterday you have to stop thinking in terms of how much is this going to cost me? How can I afford this? And start thinking in terms of what do I need to do to get to the next level with this opportunity? What is being offered that I can take advantage of that I can make sure that I meet my goals and my objectives for my company? Because I'm going to be, let me tell you, I love Shark Tank. I tweet, I live tweet every Friday. Those of you who have been with me, y'all know I live tweet every Friday. I love Shark Tank. I love The Profit. I love all of those shows on CNBC and ABC that have to do with business and entrepreneurship. But people be selling you a bill of goods. It's a, it's a load of crap because, yes, you do need money to make money. But at the same token... It's not easy. There are no grants out there. It, unless you're a nonprofit, that's the biggest pet peeve when people say, Oh, I'm going to get a grant to start my company. Well, what's your company? Oh, I'm starting, you know, a clothing line. No, baby, there's no grant for that. Okay? There's investors, there's bank loans, there's friends and family. And 
Yeah, exactly, exactly, Mickey. They're afraid, you know. You stifle yourself, and I'm, I'm. Listen, I'm one. I was there. I've been there. When you're not, you know, you're like, oh my God, if I leap, but I want to hold on to this cord behind me so that I don't fall all the way down. I've been there. I know what it's like. And and all habits, all habits die hard. They really do. But. When you decide to step into entrepreneurship, when you decide to step into the ring and say, I'm going to grow a business, not just a business, a company, a job producing, revenue producing, income producing, opportunity producing company, it's no longer about what you want. It's no longer about your fears, your needs, your objectives, because everybody else falls under you. So you have to have a level of confidence and you have to have a level of, of passion and grit to stick with it through good times and bad. I shared personally on Periscope many times, there have been times when I was up, made lots of money. You know, yes, I cracked that million dollar mark. Yes, I cracked that five million dollar mark. Yes, I've done that. There have been times when I almost lost my house. You know, I've gotten a car repossessed. You know, I'm no different than anybody else. I think what did it for me, I'm sorry, my dog is looking to go inside. I'm about to beat him. Go ahead. Was what changed for me I'm not even going to say different. I'm going to say what changed for me is my mindset because I felt that I kept stifling myself and I kept saying, you know, what if? But if I do this, then what if this happens? If I do this, then what about that? And then one day I said, you know what? I can't focus on what might go wrong. You have to focus on what will go right, not what might go wrong, what will go right. So that's why when I come across these accelerator programs, I get very excited. I share them on my Facebook. I share them on Twitter. I'm here to tell you guys that there is money out there. There are investment dollars out there. You have to be willing to do the work. You have to be willing to meet halfway. Meet position directions. Right, and you know what? Positive, I'm LaDonna. A lot of people are in that space where it's like, I just put me in the right direction. You know, when I started out in 1994, my first company was a recruitment firm. I didn't have anybody guiding me. I'm so blessed today. I'm not going to say I don't need it because, yes, I'm still learning. We're always learning. I'm continuously learning. If I ever get to a point where I feel like I know it all and I don't need any more help, then I need to retire and, and hang up my, my, my shoes and that's it because I'm always learning. But... I didn't. I started with nothing, with nobody. I didn't know anybody. And then fast forward today to 2016, I have been incredibly blessed. I saw people say, "How you do? You know what's up?" I'm like, "Nope, I can't complain. I could, but I won't." You know, I have incredibly blessed people who have come into my life, who have poured into me, and never asked anything in return. And this morning, some of you were on uh, DJ Thumbscope where he was like, you know, you're selfless and you, you know, you're a great person. Whatever. That's because I get what I give. What I get to people, I don't. It doesn't have to be me paying it. Me, me paying someone back. Let's say it that way. It doesn't have to be me paying it back. As long as I pay it forward to someone, then that's that's. We got to keep that chain going. We got to keep it going. It's not always about tit for tat. It's not always about you help me, so I'm going to help you and this and that. And this. no, you've gotten what you needed from that person. You may not be able to pay them back. Pay it forward to the next person. And that's what a lot of my social media, my writing, my books. Yeah, my books cost money. But that's what a lot of my stuff is about. Paying it forward. Even if it's just a, a meme that I put up that inspires somebody. Even if it's just a tweet that makes somebody's day. Even if it's just a message that was on my heart that particular moment that I decided to share. That could have uplifted someone. So... I give the, that kind of moral support and motivation to people, but it's also my duty to also be able to include opportunities. Hey, such and such is looking for a company to talk with a pitch competition. Hey, this accelerator is taking applications. Hey, this person is looking to mentor three companies. That's my duty. That's my, that's not, it's not for me to keep that to myself. That's selfish of me. That's not who I am. God didn't put that in my heart. It's, I can't help everybody. I've come to terms, and some of some of my people on here, they call me the peacemaker and all that, and I'm always trying to broker peace and all of that, you know, whatever. I've come to the realization that it's not for me to fix and help everybody. But those of us who, those of you that I can help, I'm going to do my damnedest to help. 
I don't care if it's just a link. I don't care if it's a book that you can read. I don't care if it's an introduction. I'm very close, very tight with my with my inner circle and who I recommend to them. There are certain people that it's like, okay, I got to see what level you at first before I introduce you to so-and-so and this person and that person. That's how you should be. You always be protective of your inner circle. But my goal, like I said yesterday on my scope, is... I want entrepreneurship done right. It doesn't mean you won't fail. It doesn't mean you won't fall on your face. But what it means is that you'll have people there, people in your corner that are going to say, okay, you fell. You messed up. Now this is how you fix it. They're not going to say, oh, see, I knew she was going to fail. I knew she was going to mess up. She didn't have what it takes. No, it's too easy to do that. Yeah, exactly. My reputation is on the line. Plus, those people, they'll kick my butt if I get off their neck, you know. But, um, you know, it's not enough to say, you know, oh, you failed. Okay, try again. No. My parents always taught me, and this is kind of probably a bad analogy, but my dad especially, what you, he, would, he would say to us, I'm going to punish you, but here's why I'm going to punish you. And hopefully you'll learn your lesson and this is what you need to do better the next time so you don't get punished. I think we need more of that in the world than, aha, look at her, she failed. Oh, look, see, I told her her business wasn't going anywhere. That's so, you know, even if it's, if it's not, people don't want to hear that. You don't know what someone's going through, you know. And like I said, I've been through enough ups and downs. I failed very publicly, very publicly. Carla, if you're on here still, you know. I have failed very publicly. And I used to be bothered by that. But you know what? Like I said, God knows what's on my heart and knows what my capabilities are. And sometimes I don't even know my own capabilities. I shock myself sometimes. And, and, and tell me if you guys have ever felt this too. My dream's not done. You know, there's so much more. Everybody sees the Empower Me and Curvy Girl Closet and Business Play and all that. There's so much more to my legacy you know, I don't want to use the word empire because that's too presumptuous for me. I'm, I'm, I try to always keep it humble. Thank you, positively speaking. But there's so much more left to my legacy. There's so much more that I have to achieve and accomplish for my companies, for my legacy, for my wealth, for my child to pass down through the generations and to give back to society at whole. That sometimes the vision scares the hell out of me. It really does, y'all. I mean, I laugh. I, y'all know I'm the queen of the joke. I'll joke. Now, I'm not up there with Miss Pep so funny because she got the title for the comedian. I laugh and I joke, but there are days when I'm like, God, that's too big. Not me. Not me. I, I, no, don't give that to me. I'm not equipped for that. And it's like, yes, you are. I wouldn't have given it to you if you weren't. And I sit there and I stress myself out about, well, how am I going to live up to expectations? How am I going to do this? Or how am I going to do this? If anything, losing, that's right, Nikki, is hard. It is so hard. I, I'm learning how to get myself out of that. And losing my best friend and, and listen, having that conversation with her about my gifts, if that has taught me anything, it's taught me that life is too short. I can't sit here second guessing. If God put it on me, I don't. I can't get second guess it. I'm not. I'm no longer putting a question mark where God puts a period. That's not for me to do. So that's why I started Incubate to Accelerate to give us an opportunity. That's why I launched my comp my other companies, Curvy Girl Closet and, and Business Place. Not just for me to make money. Heck yeah, I'm gonna make money. Of course I'm gonna make money. But it's about creating opportunities for other people too. When you're an entrepreneur. The hardest thing in the world is trying to juggle getting your startup up off the ground, bringing in other people, spinning that, that startup into an opportunity that has the potential to create more, uh, more opportunities, whether it's for vendors or employees or investors or whatever, and still maintaining your sanity. That's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work. And I tell people all the time when they say, oh, I want to start a business, I'm like, be careful what you ask for. Like I said, I've been in this game since 1994. I failed. I've succeeded. I failed. I've succeeded. So I feel I'm. I feel in a position to be able to mentor and guide other people. You know, that's what my my business core is built on: guiding and, and helping and consulting other businesses scale and grow that business. You know, we look at the the Sarah Blakely. I love Sarah from Spanx. You guys know Spanx. 
her and I used to sit on an advisory board in Atlanta together, you know, and I love her to death. She, she's so humble. She is a billion dollar company, guys. She was in Forbes, what, not last year, 2014, as a billion, the youngest woman on the billion dollar company list, okay? And she pays it forward. She's not, you don't see her out there hobnobbing and going to parties and being on the red carpet and you know, glitz and glamour. She could. She doesn't. She's very humble. Love her. She's her thing is build one million, build millionaires one at a time. That's my mantra too. Now I don't have a B in front of mine. I'm not a billionaire yet, yet. And I've already claimed that ten, uh, 2016 is going to be my 10 million dollar year. Claim that. Receive it. It's not return to sender. Is keep on coming forward right on here to the new address. That's where it is. But it's my responsibility to help those who want to be helped. I see many people. There's there's a young man I talked to today on the phone. He he's, has not become a client, but he's kind of been one of my mentees unofficially. He started following me, I guess, after he saw me in Black, Black Enterprise a couple of years ago. And he has a, I'm going to shout him out, Brandon Simmons. So, Brandon, if you're on here, he's in La, um, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You know, you guys know I like to shout people out every time. You know, thank you, positively speaking. But Brandon has a company called Mr. Carter's Exclusive. And it's a male grooming, barbershop, guidance kind of thing he has down there that he has expanded. My dude was like, Adrian, I want to come and be part of your Incubate to Accelerate program. I'm like, okay, you know, if you, if you feel you're ready for it, let's do it, whatever. For whatever reason, he wasn't able to join, you know, and, and by the way, we finished today. Today was the last session, so no more 5 a.m. getting up for me on Mondays, at least until April. But, uh, and they all did phenomenally. He was supposed to join. Something happened. He didn't. But guess what? He got an investor. He got the funding to expand out and get a new building. And now, when I talk to him today, he's talking about expanding into Atlanta, expanding into Vegas, expanding, expanding into L.A. Heck yeah, I'm proud of him. And he's all the while, all the while, and me deflecting, he's all the while, if it wasn't for you. I always keep your voice in my head. I always listen to what you say. You inspire, you inspire me so much. I'm like, thank you, but you did the work. And he, you know what he said to me? When's the next incubate to accelerate because I'm joining? I'm like, why do you need to join? He said, what are you, crazy? He said, there's still so much more I need to learn. He said, I want to go to that next level. I want to be able to, to reach different platforms and, you know, do things that you've done. And I'm like, okay, let me know. Brandon Simmons, you guys follow him on Facebook. Brandon Simmons um, is Mr. Carter's exclusive is, is the name of his company. You know, and, and very humble, very humble young man. And he feels an obligation to give back to the youth and teach them that entrepreneurship is a way. It's a way out. It's a, it's a way up, not out. It's a way up, you know? And I'm so very proud of him. Another one, and some of you guys already know about Habibi Body. That's a friend of mine. I didn't have anything to do with it other than like a satisfied customer. But her and I had many long conversations. If you guys have not seen Habibi Body, I'm not turning this into a a plug fest, guys. It's just, I'm very proud. This is the kind of people that I surround myself with. And, and I hope you get inspired from that and go find your own people to surround yourself with that as you're growing and building your businesses. So Habibi Body, she was doing this when she was still working at the news station. And she was doing it as a side thing. She, When I say, when I say, her products are like skincare crack. Oh, my God. It's so bad. It's so deep. Let me tell you. We, I was flying to L.A. one day. And I had uh, an almost new. I just maybe used it maybe two or three times. New jar of my body butter in the scrub. And I had it in my in my bag. How about the TSA confiscated it? I was ready to fight the TSA. If I wasn't. If I wouldn't have been at risk to have a charge. And been arrested. <laughs> for domestic terrorism or something. I'd have been. I would have. I'd, I'd have went off. But they confiscate, and I was hot. I was livid that whole day. She started out on a group that we used to be on, and she used to post in there. And I used to tell her, go on Facebook. No, girl, please, I'm not going on Facebook. I don't need Facebook. I'm like, Shahada, go on Facebook. At least start trying. Go on Twitter. Go on social media. I don't need social media. She finally relented. 
Yeah, I, I almost called a case. I'm gonna say, if you try this stuff, I'm telling you, it's that good. It's that good. She takes smell goods to a whole other level, and she has her she has her her clientele. She's like, and she's she's in that mindset, and I'm glad. I hope I have something to do with it. That if they can't afford it, then they weren't meant to be my clients. I'm not discounting. I'm not bargaining. There's not gonna be none of that. If if it's worth the value to you, you're gonna pay it. That's that's all I asked of her. So. You know, I look at her now, she is doing it full time. She is the CEO of this company, this brand. She's expanding out product lines. And I'm I'm just so proud of her because she's 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 let go of some of her reservations, like about social media, about advertising, about marketing and all this other stuff. And she's jumped head first in and she's doing the damn thing. I'll give you another example. I haven't talked to her in a while, but she's based in Atlanta. And some of you who are on the natural hair thing, you probably know who she is. Myleek Teal. T-E-E-L-E. Myleek. M-Y-L-E-I-K is her first name. And she has the curl box. If you guys have heard of the curl box, she this was just something in her mind at one point. Like, there should be a market for, for natural hair products. You got birch box. You got... All this other box this, box that, subscription box. And she's like, why not? $20 a month. She started out with a little box and a little glossy. She turned it, she has a magazine for it now. And it's gone viral. It's gone international. And she's made, it's very lucrative. Let's say that. Very lucrative. And what has she done? Now she's turned around and she's starting her philanthropic arm. And she gives business advice to women. That's her giving back. Because she decided to take a leap of faith, get out there, do her thing. Now, she's a publicist by trade, so she had the connections to get out there, but that's beside the point. There were so many people that believed in her product and believed in her company that it was like, what? And even I, when she first started, I'm like, just give me the links. What I need to do, what I, who I need to send it to, I'm going to send it to. Them. When you believe in yourself that much and you can prove proof of concept, People will give you money. Investors will give you money. Now, let me say this. You can't say, um, well, I'm going to start a baked goods line and then go to an investor who invests in tech companies. Now, not unless you're trying to do like Paula Dean, when she has, when she lost her everything she lost and then came and started her digital footprint. That's different. But if you're just, I'm going to open a bakery, I'm going to bake cakes, that's what I'm going to do. You can't go to a tech investor. So you got to put yourself in a position where you're in front of the right people at the right time. Get to these conferences. You know, people say, oh, there's not enough women at these conferences, not enough women speakers. Show up. Showing up is half the battle. Whenever somebody asks me to speak at something, you know, I have my limits because there's a certain amount of free events I'll speak at in a year. And then once that's exhausted, I'm not. Other, other events are paid for. But when it's something where it's a chance for me to, to bring more people that look like me, hell yeah, I'm jumping at it. Because I'm like, hello, here we are. Come on. You know, if you don't want to listen to them, to the prototype of, of what they think an investor is, come look at me. You know, focus on me and what I say and let me lead you to who you need to go to. You know, there's plenty of us out there. There's there are women accelerators and incubators out there. There are women um, uh, in uh, women in, in um, VC and in angel investing. If you're not ready for VC and for those of you who don't know, there's two different levels. Well, there's three different. You got your friends and family that you, you know, borrow money from and the banks. Then level two is angel investors. Those are people that usually do maybe fifty thousand. I think is the is the most that they'll invest in a company. Then you got the big guns, the ones you see on on the Yahoo News and Google News and, and CNBC talking about such and such have a two point three million dollar investment from such and such capital. And it, those are VCs. None of us start out ready to go to VC level. And let me let me share this secret with you guys too. We look at these news reports and we see such and such company got $2.3 million in funding. Well, they didn't just wake up and roll out of bed and create a company and all of a sudden qualify for $2.3 million. They worked their behinds off. They went through other seed, seed rounds of funding. They've gone to angel investors. They've gone to pitch competitions. All this stuff that you guys don't see behind the scenes. There's a whole lot. So so the way the media glamorizes it, exactly, blood, sweat, and tears. The way the media glamorizes it is that, oh, this new, uh, what's the new word? I hope they got rid of it. The uh, the unicorns. Oh, such and such is the next Uber. 
Such and such is the next Airbnb. Such and such is the next Facebook. They're the billion dollar unicorns. No, they didn't just wake up one day and, and someone threw that valuation. Well, wait. I'm going to get in trouble here because I always get in trouble for saying this out loud. I'm going to say it out loud because this is my Periscope and my platform and I really don't give a damn. There's a gentleman by the name of Peter Thiel. And he was one of the early investors in Facebook. And he has given Facebook a billion dollar valuation. Now, I know we all love Facebook, guys, and we're on Facebook all the time. But let me tell you something. Facebook ain't worth no damn million dollars. They don't have no million. They really, forgive the language, a lot of these, these Silicon Valley analysts and investors and whatever, they pull these valuations out of their ass. Seriously, you know, how many of you tomorrow, if Facebook said, we're going to start charging you to use your Facebook, how many of you would stick around? Not I, not me, because you've already given it to me for free. And this is why a lot of small businesses are getting frustrated with Facebook. I don't mean to get off on a rant, but they really make me upset sometimes. <laughs> But this is why a lot of people rant on Facebook because they changed it. You know, they changed the rules every day. You know, now you got to pay to play. It's, thank you, Deuce. It, it, peace out. You know, and, and in order to get seen, you have to have a huge following, a lot of traction, a lot of chatter in the group so that the algorithms bring it up in the feed. There's, I miss a lot of stuff because the groups are not that active, but they may have some stuff that's important to me, but I won't see it. Because Facebook decided, oh, that's not important enough to rank up in the Google thing, I mean, in, in algorithms, because they're not paying for it. So, yeah, I don't see the billion dollar valuation. There's maybe a billion people that are lot, that are that have accounts, but using every day, no, nah, I think they, you know, it's for the media and all of that. But, but anyway, I'm going to get off that for the Facebook people, come, the goons come and get me and give me for talking about them. But no, I wanted to share that with you guys. It was just on my heart and on my mind today. There are opportunities out there. You have to make yourself available for them and you have to be open and accepting and willing. And if I can say that the landscape is changing because now I'm seeing, you know, I don't want to say that I'm the first one because I don't think I was the first one. I think I'm the, the most vocal one about it. But I'm starting to see a lot of these, these accelerators and incubators that are starting to take notice and say, okay, we got families. We have women with children who can't just pick up and relocate 3,000 miles away. So they're starting to do their accelerator programs online now. So, you know, check them out. You can always go. Y'all know I always post something up on my page whenever I see something. Um, on Twitter, I always share things on there. Or just hit me up on email if you want a recommendation. Hey, Kyla. Yeah, you have to inbox me, Kyla. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to share. So, you guys, don't give up hope. Go get that money. Start making the right connections. Put yourself in the right circles and in the right circumstances. And get out there and kick butt, man. Kick butt. Okay. Thanks, um, Kyla. Kick butt. You're going to fail. Excuse me. You're going to fail. You're going to succeed. You're going to fail. You're going to succeed. But hang on to that inner strength and keep, pray keep prayerful because... Your attitude is 50% of the challenge. If you can if you can keep the attitude going, just reach out to Brandon. Okay, yeah. Tell him I sent you. Because he won't just accept anybody's friend's request. <laughs> Tell him I sent you. But, um, you know, if you keep your attitude, maintain a healthy attitude and, and a good attitude about things, then you'll be able to, doors will open for you. You know, and, and I there's still doors. The only thing I can explain is but God. The only reason. Because I was sitting there like, what? Why me? I don't. I don't belong, or I don't. Th mm -mm, mm -mm, it ain't me. It ain't about me. It ain't about you. It's about him. So, you know, I'm not trying to get preachy, and but maybe I am a little bit. But yeah, but get out there. Make sure you, you know, you can listen to some of my archive radio shows um, on BlogTalkRadio.com/slash Views from the Top. Uh, there's a link on my website. Uh, everything's on my website. It's EmpowerMe.org. Um, my blog there. Now I'm gonna warn you. Sometimes the language gets a little bit, tiny bit salty, um, but I keep it real. That's who I am. It's, that's and I think that's why people love me because it's like, why is this a bullshit? You know, and I'll, I'll say I call it what it is. But um, yeah, check out the archives um, for the show. I've interviewed Michael Bivens from New Edition. I've interviewed Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank. Um, I've interviewed um, Alfred Edmonds, um, Executive VP of Black Enterprise. You're welcome, sweet orchids. There's a lot of things that I've, a lot of people that I've, and every day, 
Jade and Joe entrepreneurs that you can learn from. So definitely go check it out, EmpowerMe.org. If you're interested in learning about Incubate to Accelerate, there's a fact sheet and everything up there. It's ia.empowerme.org. And for my ladies, if you're interested in Mobile Chicks, we're doing the Mobile Chicks Mastermind. I talked about that yesterday. Um, you can go to MobileChicks.empowerme.org. Um, I'm going to try to do more Mobile Chicks chat as I can. Um, my schedule, like I said, Incubate to Accelerate has, has lo- is finished today it finished so I should have a little bit more time at my disposal but whatever topics you guys want to talk about let me know because you know me I sit there we can do it like I can bring out a cup of hot chocolate we can sit out on the patio and we can just hash it out and talk about it I have no problem with it now I'll give you advice and resources and guidance but when it comes to doing blueprints and, and helping you grow there's a charge for that there's a charge for a pick my brain session <laughs> there's a charge for consultation you know for, for helping you and mapping out strategy and all of that yeah there there is when am I coming to Texas I don't know you know what we talked about that yesterday about going to different cities let me see how the reaction is for mobile chicks first and if I can get my thing my goal is this, like I said yesterday for those of you who weren't on I want to be able to bring Mobile Chicks chat to different cities. The mastermind, not the chat, excuse me. Mobile Chicks mastermind to different cities where maybe 10, 15 of us can get together for the weekend, sitting around the fireplace at a resort. We hashing it out. We mapping out strategies. We helping each other grow their businesses. How do I get on shelves? How do I get international exposure? How do I expand my business into new territories? You know, those kind of things. I don't want to talk about social media. I don't want to talk about how to market your business. There's thousands and thousands of resources out there for that. I want to talk about how you're going to get investment dollars. Who's the perfect investor for your company? How do you get a pitch deck together? How do you get in front of investors? What accelerator programs work best for my kind of company? Who can I partner with? Those are the kind of things that I want to talk about. How, how do I get, get shelf space at Barnes & Noble or, or uh uh, Barney's or Walmart or Target or whatever it is. Yeah, info at empowerme.org is the email. Thank you guys. Thank you, Kyla. You know, so I mean, I'm serious. I want to grow. I don't want to grow entrepreneurs. I want to grow moguls. I said that before. Moguls with companies, whether it's a nonprofit company, whether it's a for profit company. Whether it's a franchise that you're building, because guess what? Look at Magic Johnson, honey. He got he's built most of his wealth by strategically buying into certain franchises and expanding it from there. So it doesn't have to be that you start out your garage or your own business and things like that. It could be franchises. It could be you buying an existing business and taking that over. You know, and also another conversation that we need to have as a collective, as as small business owners and as women, you know, in general and, and men too is, oh, thank you, Kyla. We need to talk about wealth building, real estate. We need to talk about investment. You guys need to find out about, a, there's a, a, an organization called Better Investing, betterinvesting.com. And find yourself a local investment club or start your own. Let me give a word of advice. I've done this twice. <laughs> Both times I've done it. I um, founded an investment club 2004 or 6 or whatever it was and decided I want to help my friends. Wrong move. Because your friends don't take you serious unless they're on that same path as you are. And in two years we had to dissolve it because it became that 80-20 rule where 20% of the people were doing 80% of the work but everybody wants to benefit from the from the, the increase in the stock values and things like that. So we quit, myself and another another lady, we quit, we, we shut that group down and we started our own as just us two and we were so afraid, we would have meetings to invite people in to tell them about our, invest, our, our new investment club and kind of vet people out to see if they were worthy of being part of it. Yeah, you got to learn the hard way. And we were, what happened, what it did, it, it, it turned around and bit us in the butt because we were overly cautious, so we didn't want to let anybody in the new club. So we were like, okay, we can't go on like this, so we just, after a year, we dissolved that club. Am I ready to do that again? No. <laughs> it's a lot of work doing an investment club. I'll advise investment clubs. I'll point you in the right direction, but you can start with, with, with people who are like-minded, you know, and let me, let me, like-minded and like bank account. Yeah, friends don't let friends drive into walls. And friends don't let friends with no money try to invest. <laughs> Say it like that. Because 
it don't work that way. But um, yeah, like-minded people with like resources. Let's say it that way. You know, you don't have to make the same amount of money I make. But if you're if you're a good steward of your money, if you're st you're smart and responsible with your savings and with your with your wealth building, then yeah, I would I would consider you somebody on my equal that we can sit there. Okay, let's let's build this because guess what? It ain't just a club. It is a business. In every sense of the word, you pay taxes on it. You need an employee ID number, employer ID number. You need your own separate bank account. You need business papers on that, like um, LLC. We did LLC for hours, but yeah, it's a business, and you got to make sure you have people that are. My mistake was, I, I because my heart is the way that it is. It was like I'm I'm doing well. I want to bring my friends up with me, but they weren't there yet. They weren't mentally there or ready. And everything was a joke, and it was like, oh, it's Adrian, you know, because it's, it's, you know, I laugh, I joke, I'm, I'm the friend, you know, I joke around or whatever. They didn't take it serious. I'm like, I don't know about you, but I'm making money. So while they were fooling around, and yeah, I can say this, they're not mad at me anymore. I don't think they are. I don't care if they were, but I can say this now. While they were fooling around, me and the other lady, we were like, okay, what are you investing in personally? I'm like, let me check my portfolio and let me do, and I was doing my own portfolio on the side. You never let your investment club be your only source of investment. If you don't learn nothing else about investment clubs from me, learn that. Have your own. You can go to ShareBuilder. There's no fees, no monthly fees. You just pay a per um, transaction fee or whatever. ShareBuilder is now with um, Capital One. I'm sorry. They, they took it over. But, you know, or you can go to Fidelity. You know, there's no monthly fee for Fidelity. It's a little bit more expensive per trade. But, you know what, ShareBuilder, Capital One ShareBuilder, is a good starter for you guys. But go to go to betterinvesting.com because we need to through entrepreneurship, small business ownership, real estate, investing in the market, business investment, you know, angel investor. My goal for 2016 is I want to become an angel investor. You have to be um, an accredited investor and have a certain net worth in order to become an accredited what they call a credit accredited investor where I can invest my money in startups and things like that. That's what I want to do for 2016. That's one of my goals. So all of those different pieces, those components are part of, in addition to building my companies, are part of building your generational wealth. So I hope this guy, this has been helpful to you guys. It's really good. I know I get off on a tangent. I don't use a script when I do all this stuff on Periscope. But I hope that you got some value out of this. I hope that it's inspired you to do some things and make some moves. Um, again, email me, info at empowerme.org, or go, thank you, Kyla, thank you, Nikki, you know, go to empowerme.org, and I'll let you guys know when the radio show's coming back, because I'm, I'm, I'm getting back to the old me, and I got a lot of shit to say, so, <laughs> so, and you know what, Nikki and Pep, the Pep and Nikki show, they kind of inspired me, I mean, it's comedy with them, but it's inspired me to just laugh again, and inspired me to get back and, and get on my gift, and get out there and talk to people and help them build their wealth. So, with that said, thank you guys. Now I gotta go. I need a nap. I'm I'm going to sleep. I don't think I'm coming on the garden tonight. But yo, I'm I've been up since 5 a.m. Y'all, I'm tired. So, have a good day. You guys be blessed. And what did Thump say this morning? Get that money. 